Mexico's most dangerous volcano, just erupted 200 times in one day, in 24 hours. And this is, of course, a volcano that we've been seeing, seeing uh, rumbling for days now on end. It's the Popocatepetl volcano of Mexico, very close to Mexico City, in an area inhabited by 26 million people. And it can cover this city in ash. This is a Google image of it. You can see it's snow covered and the crater is just uh, amazing. It's fallen in already and it's active. It's been active uh, quite a few days now and they've expected this, but this is just too much. 200 in one day. And uh, you'll see now how close it is coming up, the next image, how close it is to Mexico City. It's only 37 miles southeast. Here we go. That little yellow uh, pin is on the upper uh, right hand, left hand side is Mexico City. The letters are in Greek. I'm sorry because I live in Greece. And uh, the other one, the pin down uh, southeast is the volcano. And it's only 37 miles from Mexico City. 26 million people living in, it, in this area. And um, it's a tremendous uh, danger. Volcanic Ash Advisory, Buenos Aires Center, Buenos Aires VAAC issued the following report. This is today, uh, having to do with the volcano ash uh, emissions. Explosive activities continue. Volcanic Ash Advisory Center, VAAC, Darwin warned about a volcanic ash plume that rose up to 7,000 feet estimate altitude or flight level 070 and is moving at 10 KTS in southeast direction. And if we read more concerning that, the full report is as follows. Read all. Uh, we can go. This is on Volcano Advisory. The um, Okay, eruption details, VA emission flow 70. This, I guess this is more of a, um, let's put it this way, for those having to do with uh, the knowledge of what all this means, it's full of numbers and the hours of the day that this has gone on. So, Ducato, Volcano News and Eruption Update. Amazing. Popocata Petzl Volcano Volcanic Ash Advisory. Today, explosive activity continues. And the second, of course, uh, explosive. This is, uh, we, have a, we have a tremendous amount of ring of fire, earthquake, and volcanic activity. And uh, even in Europe, if you'll see the map here, even that little... Uh, triangle there over Italy, but we have, we have the, which is active, we've had a tremendous amount of earthquakes in Greece as well, where I live, and I've noticed that it has to do also with the solar activity. They're definitely connected. Restless, very restless. And I'll leave links below for you for this. A map of currently active volcanoes. Uh, the ring of fire, as we said. And uh, all of South America. Central America. Of course, Mexico, this area, uh, this... Uh, let me measure it again on Google Earth. That is only about a thousand miles from California. Well, not even California. Let's say from Los Angeles. It's about 1,400 miles from Los Angeles. And as we know, it's on the Ring of Fire. It's on the San Andreas Fault. And uh, that's very active. Now, what they were afraid of is happening. The most dangerous volcano in Mexico erupted 200 times in the past 24 hours. There's been a total blackout about this in the U.S. media. I guess there is, there is more important things that they want to concentrate on. But usually, they don't concentrate on too many international things. 
Authorities are stating that the odds of a more volcanic activity at Mount Popo, Popo Catepetl, are immediate to high. And if a full-blown Plinian eruption were to occur, it would be the worst natural disaster in the modern history of North America. The Plinian disaster. The Plinian earthquakes are uh, not good. Uh, they're the, the kind that we saw in Mount Vesuvius, for example. The eruption or the Vesuvian eruption, Plinian are also called Vesuvian eruptions, are volcanic eruptions marked by their similarity to the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. That's the one that uh, uh, destroyed the ancient Roman cities of Pompeii and Heraclium. And the eruption was described in a letter written by Pliny the Younger after the death of his uncle, Pliny the Elder. And uh, what causes such a thing? Obviously, they're usually in subduction zones, uh, just like we have here in uh, Mexico. The largest and most violent of all the types of volcanic eruptions are the Plinian eruptions. They're caused by the fragmentation of the gassy magma and are usually associated with very viscous magmas, dacite and rhyolite. Uh, that's according to uh, geology, what I've what read, read for you. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if it's going there. Who knows if it's going there, but that would be really bad. Um, you have that uh, pyroclastic flow, that P flow that goes very fast. It goes about uh, 300 miles an hour. You cannot outrun, outrun that. It's just uh, hopefully they get enough in, uh, in, well, in warning signs that they can evacuate people in time so that nobody has, um, they don't have any victims, any casualties. So if a full-blown Plinian eruption were to happen, it would be the worst disaster in uh, North American history. Approximately, as we said, 26 million people live within 60 miles of Popocatépetl's crater. Popo, uh, the Popo Crater. So we're talking about a potential for death and destruction of a scale that is very, very dangerous. In ancient times, as we said, Mount, Mount Popo buried the entire Aztec cities in superheated mud. And then it went to sleep for about a thousand years. And uh, uh, it's unfortunate that we see it now activating again. It started waking up again in the 1990s. And now this is the most active that we've seen it ever since the volcano reawakened. So that's not good news. Uh, about every thousand years, if they erupt like they did the last time, that's not at all good news. And what we see over the last several days, noting uh, nothing short of stunning, according to the British news source, a level three yellow alert was put into effect after the 200 eruptions were recorded in just 24 hours. And this is what they said. Popocatepetl volcano, just 35 miles from Mexico City, 20 miles from Puebla, sent ash and plumes of smoke more than one and a half miles high. Mexico's National Center for Disaster Prevention, Sena Pred, has warned people to keep away from Popo volcano after the 20 uh, the 200 eruptions were recorded in just 24 hours. A level three yellow alert has been issued, meaning the chance of a volcanic activity is immediate to high. Well, it's no good just telling them to keep away. I mean, you have to do something about evacuating all these people, but where would they go? Please tell me, where do you put 26 million people? Now, at this point, seven and a half mile security radius is established around the volcano, which is nothing really. And when you think about it, and if things continue to get worse, authorities will be forced to begin the large-scale evacuations. Now, we hope that there is enough warning before such a Vesuvian or Plinian eruption happens, because there are towns that could be completely buried by the superheated uh, ash, mud, mud type of ash, traveling at, well, it says, see, here it says 60 miles an hour, but it can go up to 300 miles an hour. While not every Vesuvian Plinian eruption is uh, ferocious, it could be slower, it could be faster, all the volcanologists say 
that uh, details about Popo's devastation, they're not sure about it. First, you would see a 1,000 degree lahar, or paraclastic, the P-flows, speeding at 60 miles an hour. Those are the ones at 60 miles an hour. Those flows would reach, if not all, the towns in the high-risk area, close to including Santiago, Xalid, Sintla, that has a population of 2,196, and San Pedro Benito Juarez, 3,153 people, and Buena Vista with 814 people. But it's known that we, no human can run that fast to around that P flow. If people are able to get into their cars uh, in time, they would have a chance. But then you can imagine the gridlock and the traffic on the roads, forget that. In reality, the highways would quickly become completely clogged as all these thousands of people, tens of thousands, are trying to escape with their cars. And you can imagine what that would be like. Mexico City would be out of range for if the, if, if the tsunami of the superheated mud uh, gets there, but the volcanic ash would kill far more people. Even breathing in all this could potentially be a death sentence. Now, um, the, the real threat, they say, begins after the lava stops. If the wind blew in Mexico City's direction, a cloud of ash 20 centimeters thick would fall on the buildings, dismantle roadways. You can imagine, you wouldn't be able to walk or drive anywhere, shutting down the airports and the subways, everything. And breathing it, of course, would kill you. That would be the first day. After that, the ash would clog the drainage lines, poison the water supplies, of course, electricity and transmission via short-circuiting, that would all stop. Food supplies then would be cut off because you wouldn't have any uh, ways of getting driving food anywhere, and you'd have no electricity. The uh, the uh, uh, cities would probably resemble something like a World Trade Center night of uh, September 11, except with the fact that they have three times as many people trying to get out, all under this ash cloud. This. <laughs> This is a, the worst case scenario. Ultimately, in that we're talking about an event that would mean uh, the end of Mexico City, the modern day Mexico City that we know today. And uh, this is the most active that Popo volcano has been in our lifetime, as we said, in a thousand years, because that's when it last erupted, bringing the end to the Aztecs. This is frightening when you realize that a thousand years has gone by already and it's time for this thing to erupt. So uh, what can you do about this? You have to, uh, what can you do? The government is of course responsible to save the people and they have to be in uh, close contact with the geologists to find out what exactly is going on every hour of the day because they have to be on watch to protect the people to get them out on time. Not only to tell them to get out, but to get them out on time. We're talking about uh, almost, well, 30 million. I thought it was 26, about 30 million. So, um, the uh, in Mar on March 4th, uh, this volcano, which is about 11,000 feet tall, <clears throat> uh, produced a number of steam plumes. They're known as fumaroles. And the uh, Explosions of these continue throughout the month, and since then, several have been highly visible from many miles away. We saw them in the webcams to Mexico. They have a 24-7 webcam on it, and the people have been watching and uh, even videoing of those things. Those are for, you know, for, uh, free for anybody to do that. Visible from many miles away, widely captured in photographs and cell phone videos. So this is from uh, Volcano Discovery. I'll leave links below for you for that. And also DC Dirty Laundry. If you'd like to join me on my 
Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.